Hey guys, I'm gonna chill out with Sub-07 and welcome back to Let's Play Super Mario Sunshine. Last time, we completed everything there was to do in Rico Harbor, knocking out the second of the seven areas. This time, it's time for Gelato Beach's turn. Now, we do have a couple of shines left to do that aren't including the 100 coin shine, so we're gonna take care of those real fast. First things first, we gotta go all the way back to episode one, because we never did the alternate shine for the Dune Bud Castle secret. And also, there's a couple of blue coins we can pick up here and there. And one of them is actually in this mission in particular. Spray to pay. Pay to spray. Jump. Spray the red cataquack. Okay, it was him. Okay. I wasn't sure 100% if he had actually already been tagged. If he wasn't, we would have been in trouble. But thankfully, he's taken care of, so that's one less shine to, uh, blue coin to worry about. This is what I get for not taking as many notes as I probably should have. There are a few blue coins in particular that we're going to have to get that are stuck in the water. As you can probably see off to your right over there. But we'll be getting those all together when we're going for the 8th shine for this area. Plus since we got blood... Uh, <laughs> blood! <laughs> oh god, this game would be very different if it was blood instead of flood. Since we have flood, the sand area here is going to be a lot easier. Not easy, period, but easier. Just don't screw up. Like, these first two blue, two red coins, they're easy to get because, well, duh. As is this one. But now we gotta play a bit frisky. We got 40 seconds to get the others all around here. Okay. I know one is inside, so we're gonna get that one right now. Oh god. There's one. 20 seconds. Where's the last one? It's on the other side, I believe. Yep. Okay, 15 seconds. Plenty of time. Because timer stops once you touch it. Boom. Easy does it. Whew. A bit scary, but nothing we can't handle. Just hover over. Don't take any uh, risky trips by just diving for it. Shine! And a smooth 69 shines. Nice. Alright, that's the easy part taken care of. Now comes the... Uh, I'm not gonna go with hard part, but annoying part. That's for sure. For one thing, we actually should not be going to episode 8 right away. We need episode 6 first. You might be wondering, why the hell do we need episode 6 first? That's just red coins of the coral reef. We need Yoshi. Yoshi is necessary for this, and he only appears in Episode 6, Red Coins of the Coral Reef. Where exactly he appears, I actually don't remember. Uh, I think he's over on this side. Okay, now that's the Noki couple. Uh, there he is. Okay, he wants bananas, um, and the fruit stand should have those for him. Stop sunglass, dude. I actually don't need you today, so I'm gonna ignore you. We don't got any money to pay for this, but that's fine. They're not gonna judge me for it anyway. Don't fall into the goo, or else you will make the same dreaded mistake that uh, one Sir Josh of Jepson made years ago. Shout out to anyone that actually remembers that, because oh god, I realize now that is over 10 years old to make that reference. Shit. Oof. Alright, Yosh, let's do this. Yoshi is necessary for two blue coins in particular. Also, he can eat cataclax. So he can make your life way easier. Just spray the goo here to destroy it. Spray this area to reveal Bigfoot's footprint to get a blue coin that only appears in this episode. It might appear in other episodes where you can't get Yoshi, but uh, that's not helpful, so disregard that. Spray the beehive. Because, you know, that's a thing you should do, is spray beehives. And then I guess if it's with poison to kill them, but still. Oh god. Now, once again, this is not the area you want to do 100 coins for, so don't worry about that here. Just focus on getting the blue coins. Thank you. And I believe that's all we actually need him for? Uh, I want to say, at least. Because there is roughly seven blue coins that we're missing for this place. Let's double-check the totals. Yeah, seven. And we only needed him for two. 
So, sorry, Yosh. We're bailing. Okay, that's taken care of. Now comes the actual unfun part. First things first, we're going to clean up blue coins for this. We're going to the very last mission and the most despised mission for Gelato, the Watermelon Festival. Um, I actually don't know if this is the most despised because you could argue that the Sandbird is more hated. Watermelon Festival here is kind of funky in that... Well, you're escorting something, so it's an escort mission, which sucks, but there's other things that people don't like about this mission that we'll have to get into. But for now, it's blue coin hunting. Turbo is going to be your best friend for this because we're going to be getting some stuff that's underwater. There's the one blue coin right over there. And there's at least two, maybe three others that are also underwater that we got to grab. I believe, yep, there's one right in between the palm trees. Nice. And now comes the uh, sketchy part. Turbo nozzle time. We're not going to do this entirely for this, but it's going to be very important for some stuff. Go diving. Get another one. And zoom this way. Keep an eye out because the blue coins do like to move sometimes underwater, so you really got to be careful. Two. Nice. I believe there's one more for us, maybe three, but there, there it is, I see it. Gotcha. You're not gonna escape when I'm moving this fast. Okay, those are the ones that I was worried about because they're all underwater, but I actually, I do feel like there is one more. Because there is normally four blue coins. I wanted to say that we got one of them already, but I just can't say for certain. Because I might be thinking of a different mission. Hmm, doesn't look like it. If I'm unsure, I can always check again, I suppose. For now, let's get the rocket nozzle, because we're going to need it. Because this will also be very, very helpful for us. Now, the thing that I'm worried about, aside from this, Watermelon Festival as a whole is just a bit of an annoying mission, but what we're doing in particular is... Ugh. Uh, bothersome. Let's see. There it is. Okay. I'm gonna spray the sun and shine outlines again, because I don't know if we missed one. There's one. That should put us at 28, I think? Something like that? Praying and bouncing on Cataquacks gets you exactly one coin. Not the best in the world, but not terrible. Okay, 28. There's four Shine Out Lights in the sand. I know we got at least two of them. I don't know if we got all four, so I'm going to just reconfirm to make sure. Because I don't want to be the one to wind up making that mistake of not know, uh, realizing it. Might as well check all your bases for safety. We're really just mostly going to be focusing on getting the actual blue coins themselves first and then worrying about 100 coins. Because I think they're just a bigger priority, at least right now. But so long as we take care of them, it won't be the end of the world. Um, for now, since I can't seem to find the other shine markers, we're going to use the rocket nozzle. There's a blue coin up there, which will actually lead to me getting to show something off that I always forget about is in this game. Jump. Okay. Thank you. Now, what we want to do, uh, if I can angle this... There we go. We're going to be bouncing along the wires here, all the way over to this side. Because there's actually something very interesting that we can show off here. Oh god. Or we can just, you know, suffer. God damn it. <sighs> Morrow. Also diving uh, headfirst into the sand will actually get you stuck for a second, which is a little funny. Let's try this again. Jump. Thank you. Oh, God. It's tomorrow. Are you serious? Okay, cut. 
There we go. Okay. There. Blue coin just hanging out right here. Don't worry about it too much. But a fun thing you can do with this game in particular, assuming that I remember how to do this. Yeah, here we go. Is this. By pressing Y, Mario will grab onto the edge of the wire instead of just balancing on it. Spray with flood and do it in a rhythm to get Mario to start swinging. Keep this up. And swing! To wind up actually flying off of it. It is an interesting method to actually getting more coins if you can master it, but it's a really obtuse technique that you kind of never have to actually use. Like, it's really weird to me that that exists in this game because I've never seen an actual, like, required point where you have to use it. It's a cool idea, I guess. It makes sense as well because water physics and propelling yourself off of it, but it's so out there. Like, who would think to check for that? All right, let's see, though. We got three blue coins, or no, two blue coins left to check. I'm going to scout the beach. If I don't find anything, we'll just keep moving and hopefully adjust as we go. Oh. Oh. There you are. Okay, there was one that I missed. Good. 180. Uh, that just leaves one. Or, wait, was that everything? That might have been... Please tell me that was everything. 30! Oh, thank goodness. Okay, that's all the blue coins taken care of, which means now it's on to the slightly more annoying part. If you thought that part was annoying, oh boy, you ain't seen nothing yet. So the gimmick with this episode is watermelons. It's the watermelon festival, after all. And if we talk to the guy back at the start, he'll actually explain things a bit better about what's happening. What's up, bud? The watermelon festival's now open! Why must I stand here? I'd rather be drinking a smoothie. Uh, good question, bud. But truthfully, the whole idea of this is that we are competing in the contest that they're hosting for the Watermelon Festival. If we want to get that shine that they got over there in the blender, we have to win. The watermelon Festival's about to end. Hurry, hurry. Good luck and doot doot. Just roll your watermelon over this pier to the shop. Doot 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 doot. Yeah, pretty much. You have to find the largest watermelon and compare it to these... And if yours is biggest, you win. They actually got some pretty impressive watermelons out here, if we're being honest. I think I have the biggest watermelon right now. But what'll I do if someone brings a bigger one? Oh no! Well, good question, bud. Luckily, for you at least, we're not doing that this episode. Our focus is the watermelons themselves. You can roll them by walking into them. You can spray them to move them. Sometimes. And you can dive into them. Doing so pops them, like a balloon. And they produce coins when you do it. Watermelons in this area will contain exactly 10 coins. This is a very slow and monotonous mission, I'm sorry. We're gonna be doing a lot of just popping things. Alright, let's see. There's a few spots we can... Oh god. <laughs> There's still a few spots we can go to that have a decent amount of coins, though, so it's not the end of the world. It's just a slow mission. Which, hey, sometimes slow missions are not the end of the world either, so don't worry about it too much. And also, all these watermelons you see around, don't even bother focusing on them, because there's one area in particular that has the best watermelon, and that's the one you need to grab. <laughs> oh, battery. Whatever. It's not the time to focus about that right now, game. 35. Not the end of the world, but not terrible either. All right, spray. Hold still. Yeah, cataquax and just popping watermelons, unfortunately, is the best method to get 100 coins in this place. There's no spot you can easily grind them, like, say, in Bianco Hills, which just gives you a ton of coins, or Rico Harbor that gives you a specific spot for it. Or, in Peanut Park's case, a really good spot to cheese everything, because Peanut Park has a really nice one that you can do really early. Doink. Take that. 31. The good news is as well, the red cataplex, at this point in time, you probably know how to deal with these things, so they're not going to give you much trouble. The only difference is when the camera decides not to agree with you and screw you over. Whack. Okay, 45. That's alright. We could do better, but I'm also not angry right now. He tried to flip back over, but I said no. Fuck his feelings. <laughs> We're almost at 50, which is good. That's a good number to have so far. Ow! Oh, God. 
Don't forget, though, Red Cataquax, if you stun them, will also, you know, cause a cr actually deal you damage. They're not blue Cataquax, which can't hurt you. At least through normal means, so be careful. Uh, Leaf Seed here that will just produce stairs if we sprint. We never actually needed this, because you can always just wall jump your way up here, but I guess it's something if you need. And up here, if you're paying attention, this is actually where the best watermelon is, because this is the big one. Uh, ooh. Good coin trail over there. I suppose we could also have done the fling off if we did it correctly. It would have actually gotten us a good amount of coins. But I'm terrible at doing that one in particular, so we're just kind of not going to focus on it. Oh, God. No. Stay away. Whoa, well, God. Okay. You know what? We're on the sun. We're on the solar panel. That's fine. And watch out for the bees. Fuck. Fucking god, bees. Who'd have thought Mario's greatest enemy would be bees? Stop it. Thank you. There we go. 60. It's a lot better. Hooray. Looks like we're not really going to get much more in terms of coins from this stuff, so we're going to have to find other places to get them. Thankfully, there's options for that. Not good options, per se, but options nonetheless. Truthfully, I should have grabbed these ones first. The ones There's just a bunch of coins hanging out on the palm trees and on the swing over there, which will get us a good amount regardless. But just be careful. Doink. Alright. Turbo nozzle, that's good. Oh, God. Oh, my God. <laughs> Can we not... Mario, we've climbed trees before. It's okay. It's not gonna be the end of the world if you can't climb one tree, but please. Don't make this harder than it has to be. Thankfully, the trees, for the most part, are at least climbable. You don't have to worry about just, like, leaping towards them, at least. This ain't Galaxy, if that's the case. Or I guess 64 is more accurate, because 64, you don't get many trees you can actually climb. Over this way... Back where we got that earlier blue coin. Okay, 70, 71. I think we're going to get to 76 or so next. All right, get on the swing, please, Morrow. Thank you. It is kind of funny that they just have a swing out here and be like, yeah, there's coins on that. Duh, why not? All right, 76... Not awful, not great, but it's a decent amount. And yes, Mission 8 is the best one to do for this. As unfortunately, there is not a other mission that makes this better. Gelato Beach tend to tends to have one of the longer shines for this, so don't worry about it too much. Just so long as you don't get attacked by Cataquax all the time, you should be fine. Also, funnily enough, Cataquax, they're able to destroy watermelons as well. But sometimes the watermelon fights back and they will just fall over if they run into it. I don't know why, but Cataquax are stupid, so uh, make of that what you will. But yeah, for the most part, we're just kind of going to be, you know, running into things. <laughs> Ace in point, he ran into the tree. Useless, stupid fucking Cataquax. I suppose as well, while we're doing this, I do have a couple of comments that I can bring up because I actually... I don't know if I've made this clear before. I got a Discord server that I run. It's public, so if anyone wants to join, I'll actually put a link in it. But the public Discord, I just have a general chat where I said, hey, if you want to post any questions for me to do while I'm doing 100 coins, by all means, post them now and I'll take care of them. And we got a couple, so I might as well cover those while I'm at it. Let's see here. Uh, pfft, God damn it. I look over to the side of me and I just see the question, Chili Dogs. That's not a particularly good question, but it's a question nonetheless, so I'll say maybe. <laughs> I don't know, I could go for a chili dog right about now. Actually, that sounds not the worst thing in the world, but chili is not my thing normally. Uh, let's see, a question from Kiara who says, what's a game you would like to LP but probably never will? Oh. See, I was unsure about that for a while because I actually had something in mind for that, but now that i am thought about it more, I'm like, yeah, I could probably do that just fine. Ah, what is a game that I'd like to do that I probably never will? <laughs> Probably a long-ass RPG like Xenoblade. That's just too much. Like, Persona 5 is another example where the game is really good and I enjoy playing it. 
It's just so fucking long. I don't want to put the time into do that for a Let's Play. Like, I'm a fan of shorter games. I'll play RPGs. I enjoy RPGs a lot. They're very long. All right, pop this. Okay, we're getting, we're running out of coin options, so that's not the worst thing in the world. What am I supposed? Oh, <laughs> come on, pop the melon, Morrow. Thank you. Okay, what's next? Uh, looks like from Scotian. Favorite real, favorite RP stories that I was involved in. Ooh. That's actually a pretty good question. Uh, probably Chaos Wars. That's not really something I bring up very often because, well, the theater has been dead for a very long time. But I used to be involved in a forum that did a, a long-term RP. And that was super fun because it just went eventually completely off the off the wall and absurd. And I told you, these things cannot handle watermelons for some reason. But only sometimes. Sometimes they actually do just pop super fast. Oh, and watermelons, if they bounce for whatever reason, like if they're taken off the ground, will explode once they come back. Let's see. <laughs> what the fuck? Okay, I, I hope the god I did not read. No, I read that correctly. Ew. Someone gives me the question of what are my thoughts on Mountain Dew wine? Why is that a thing? Whose idea was that? <laughs> Ew. I've heard of, like, pickling stuff in weird substances, but making wine out of it is a whole new level of cringe. Like, that's disgusting. Why are you making watermelon wine- or Mountain Dew wine? What's wrong with you? Uh, and last question seems for now. Who inspires me? Ooh. Oh, that's- that's another hard question to answer. Probably just, like, the old Let's Play guard, because, I don't know, that's just kind of what I've always enjoyed about just YouTube content like this, is... Let's Plays kind of changed a lot with time and they've sort of evolved into very different things like people who just play games and scream at them or VTubers you could argue or it's a type of let's play but that's more just people being into the people rather than the actual game itself I like the old stuff that was like talking about a game its history its development and everything while also sharing your own personal experiences about that so just a lot of people that did that were my inspiration uh could I name someone off the top of my head uh Probably. The old TRG crew, a lot of the people involved with, uh, that sort of thing. Uh, Smite from Something Awful. There's a, there's a lot of people that I can name for that. 96. We're so close. Just a few more, and we should be good to get out of here. But yeah, it looks like for now that's all the questions I have, so if anyone actually wants to add more questions to this, by all means, uh, head on over to my Discord server and just post some questions. I do have a thread for that if you're curious. I don't expect I'll get anyone because as much as I wish it would happen, uh, let's be real, there's not that many people that are watching this series, unfortunately. <laughs> Please remember to like, comment, and subscribe. <laughs> and that's a clean 100. Oh, thank God. No more of that to worry about. No, no seriously, like, comment, subscribe, spread the word, it actually does help a lot. I know it's a fucking meme at this point, but it does help, especially for smaller time YouTubers like myself. If you want people like me to be able to still do this and do what we love and actually make a living off of it, spreading the word is the best you thing you can do. Shine. Okay, that's 70. Oh, finally. All right. Now to actually take care of mission eight for real. Because, honestly, normal Mission 8, people are afraid of it because it's really easy to fuck up, but it's a lot less tedious than the 100 coin shine. So long as... Ooh, almost burped. So long as you're paying attention. Here's what we're gonna do. We know where the biggest sh uh, watermelon is already. The problem is getting it down to the pier is gonna be the actual issue. So what we're gonna do... Ow. Ow, uh-oh. Uh, is hopefully not get ourselves hurt further by Cataclax, because that will just end very poorly. Oh, God. And let's head over this way. Here we go. So, yes, giant-ass melon here. 
The problem is, uh, getting it over there. Here's what we're gonna do. I'm gonna slide this thing. Uh, pff, glitch it, and then send it flying. Oh god, where- whoa, whoa, where'd it go? Oh no, that's a bad area. Okay, here's the challenge now. Uh, we have to roll this to the goal without letting it pop, so keep moving. You're, essen you're essentially just playing an escort mission with this, and you have to protect the watermelon at all costs. Which isn't the end of the world, but it's really stressful if you don't know how to protect this thing. No matter what, do not dive directly into it because it will pop. Otherwise, just uh, keep it away from the cataquacks and just work carefully. Oh, and I suppose I should probably address that real fast while we're doing this. Uh, uh, I mentioned one of my inspirations for, for just doing Let's Play in general was TRG. Regarding a particular person from that, who shall not be named currently, uh, they fucked up. That's all I can really tell you. I hope that the help that they are seeking actually does show, and that they can be better. I don't know exactly what all happened because I wasn't there, but I hope everyone who was affected uh, can move forward from it a better person. That's all I can really tell you. As for this, though, this is the hard part. Moving the watermelon. Oh, God. Luckily, just very slowly inch this towards him. And there we go. Whoa! Now that's a big old watermelon like I've never seen. Never seen? It's right up at the top of the hill. It's not that hard to find. I don't even need to get the caliper out for this one. You win. And he throws it into the blender. Juice it up. And out pops our last shine for Gelato. Where the entire game freezes around it. Nice. Now, funny story. You don't need to actually use the watermelon to get this. There is a way to glitch yourself into the jar and grab that shine early. I've never done it. I have no intention of doing it. But it is a thing you can do if you wish and want to look it up. Let's get out of here. Shine. That's three areas down. Only four more to go, I think. Pina, Serena, Noki, Pianta. Yeah, okay, yeah, that's four. Oof. Bit worried I miscounted. Alright, um, that is probably gonna be all there is for us to do for now. We could potentially move on to Pina Park next episode, but I think there's actually a lot of other things we can do first, because... Let's check our totals real fast. We still got a lot of work to do in a few places. And some places need more than others. So I think next time on Let's Play Super Mario Sunshine, we're going to Serena Beach. Because we got some stuff we got to deal with down there. Till next time, ice out. <laughs>